different. Yeah. <laughs> that, hey, come on, you guys get out of here. <laughs> That's a cool shot. Their wings out. Yeah. Were they open? Yeah. Oh, awesome. I think the cat wouldn't have liked it if she would gotten him though. No. I'm here with uh, with Toots, and uh, Toots is is our shop manager, Josh uh, Fringer's owl. Um, and she is beautiful. She's really, really beautiful. Her eyes are so yellow. Um, and they're so big and she's got her eyes on on our our kitten we're showing toots off today because uh, because of the flute of the month for October and as I've told you before the whole flute of the month um, project has been very invigorating for me creatively in terms of thinking of of ways to express things with uh, with my art and uh, and so for October, my wife uh, recommended that we do something about Hallow's Eve. Um, uh, you know, people call Halloween now, um, and uh, but she recommended that we talk about Hallow's Eve and what Hallow's Eve was uh, meant to be, which is uh, a time to remember our ancestors and a time to uh, remember where we come from and uh, and those who have gone before. And so, uh, as we were thinking about what we might uh, do for a totem and, and designing the flute, the idea of using an owl came to mind, um, in part because of Toots, but also in part because of uh, the legends of the owl being uh, the voice and bringing the voice of our ancestors to us. And uh, there's an incredible majesty with the owls, they, uh, as, as I got talking with Josh about owls, he's, he knows so much um, about these creatures uh, that, uh, that it was really amazing. One of the things that I think is most amazing and very, very interesting for us as flute players is their ability to hear sound. If, if we try to be quiet here in this uh, uh, suburbia that I live in, um, we're fairly close to the country, but I can still hear all this traffic behind me. Maybe you'll hear it on the video, maybe you won't, but I guarantee Toots can hear it. Um, you, I can see Toots has got, his, got her head turned and listening to a beeping uh, truck perhaps back there. Um, and she has incredible ability to hear because of the shape of her skull and the shape of uh, not just the skull. Can I touch you, Toots? Will you let me touch you and not get mad? She's a little grumpy today. She, she entertains some, uh, some other people, so. And I'm a little jumpy around her. <laughs> so just let her bite me, right? Yeah, she won't hurt you. Yeah, you want to bite on me? Oh, that's quite, you're like Dax. Yeah, I like that. You guys go away. <laughs> I got Dax here too, so. Um, so Toots' face, if you, if you see her face here, it's a dished out. And uh, you've seen those dishes that they use for long distance hearing. Well, her face is designed like that. All of the feathers, she's got these feathers on her nose that stick straight out. All of those feathers can vibrate with sound. Um, and with air movement. Um, the way that her, her eyes are and the, and the shape of those feathers there, they, they transmit all of the vibrations in the air to her, her skull and to her ears. Um, and she's actually got ears. Do you know which one's up and which one's down? So her left ear would be up and her right ear. So I got it right. <laughs> the left ear is up and the right ear is down. And what that does for her is it allows her to not only hear in stereo, which would be left to right, but she can hear in three dimensions. She can hear um, uh, high and low as well as left and right. And because of the shape of her face, she can hear so well that she could actually hear a mouse through two feet of snow and capture it. <laughs> That's amazing. Absolutely incredible. Um, 
in order to do that though she can't be talking all the time like I am she's got to be quiet and she's got to be very still and everything about her is designed to um, allow her to be very quiet even when she's flying um, the little whispering of the air going through the uh, past her wings um, all of that is designed so that she can uh, she can hear what she's trying to uh, to hear and of course for her it's all about survival it's all about feeding herself um, her eyes are so large in fact that uh, you can see her eyes are huge um, they actually you, you only see a very small part of her eye and the the eyeball itself gets much bigger behind so that she can see extremely well during the uh, during dark hours hello Dax and um, yeah, she likes Dax <laughs> and um, she can uh, so she can see very well during the nighttime because of the size of this eye it allows an incredible amount of light in just like a bigger lens on a telescope a bigger opening on a telescope allows it to capture in more light the same thing with her eye and her iris um, it allows in a tremendous amount of light what that does to her though is it limits the amount of brain capacity that she has as an owl so she's designed to be very responsive to her environment being able to hear extremely well so much so that her entire face and head is shaped as her ear it really her entire face is really her ear with two different sensors high and low and um, and, and her eyes that allow her to see uh, very well and and all of that so that she can responsively hunt because she's got to eat somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 14 to 18 mice a, a day in order to uh, to stay healthy or at least an owl in the wild um, would that be true with uh, the great horned as well as a barn owl um, yeah except the the great horns favorite thing to hunt are skunks and porcupines oh, really? so they they eat bigger meals um, she's got incredible claws. I mean, the, the creatures are amazing. When you when you see the pictures of the flute, you'll notice that there's two claws um, in the front and two in the back. Uh, the reason that that's that way is that's actually the way that she's sitting right now. If you can see, she's got two claws out here in the front, and then she has two that come in the back. And those claws are designed so that she has incredible gripping force. Uh, in fact, it. For all of the raptors, uh, the owls have the, the strongest gripping force with their um, talons um, because of the way that they're designed. So basically, she has uh, one, thing, one claw that can rotate around and act as a thumb, just like her, her thumb finger can. So her claws are designed. I don't help her. Uh, cilia or uh, fringe. Yeah, it's amazing. That's and what cuts the air. And same on this uh, this leading feather here. Mm -hmm. huh? wow, you really are remarkable. We we'll probably won't cut that out of the video. I think we might leave that in because you got to see Josh for a minute. Um, <laughs> Josh is awesome. He's uh, he's just doing a great job here at Wood Sounds. Um, and uh, and it's it's been wonderful working with them over the last few months um, really just a, a month and a half is about all uh, so we've been deep deep in training here at Wood Sounds um, and uh, although it's a little bit frustrating for for all of us because we haven't been able to produce as much the training has gone awesome and uh, and we we basically are kind of coming to the end of that training period um, to where we're we'll be in full production uh, within the next week or two, which is really exciting. Um, at any rate, so um, 
the uh, the flute of the month I want to tell you a little bit more about the woods of the flute of the month because the owl is just one part of it the owl on the flute of the month is actually made out of uh, coconut palm the coconut palm comes from uh, came from a neighbor of mine who uh, went on a mission to Vanuatu and while he was there uh, one of the stories that he learned was a story of how um, how the uh, Vanuatu had been basically deforested during World War II. So when they were done, these trees were planted to to reforest areas that had been deforested um, in preparation for uh, battles. Um, the, with the hope that, that those coconuts would provide some income and, and they have done that. They've provided income and, and so on for the island. Now, however, the coconut trees have gotten to an age where they're, uh, they're getting close to a, a century old and, uh, and so they're not as productive as they once were and at about 80 years now and so um, so they're starting to take some of these trees down and, and replanting. Uh, the problem with the coconut palm, though, is that it attracts uh, uh, some beetles and pests to the area and can cause a lot of uh, environmental issues if it's left in piles. And so they've had a trouble, you know, figuring out what they can do with these trees, try, trying to figure out uh, if there's a market that they can perhaps uh, uh, use the trees in. And, and that's what my neighbor was uh, working on quite a bit with the palm. The palm is a really fascinating um, wood. I've used black palm before and I've used uh, red palm as well. The coconut palm that he's brought to me has um, been colored um, in both ranges and so I'm no longer convinced that black palm is one species and red palm is another species because I've seen wood from him that's dark like this um, wood is and I've also seen wood from him that is uh, uh, very very blonde. Um, this particular wood has dark stripes in it the dark stripes are very hard and then the light brown is uh, is much um, softer compared to the, the dark the dark wood. Um, it has long fibers that you can see growing in it but when you see it on on the end you just see the ends of those fibers so it makes for just an incredible figure. Um, the, uh, the next wood we have is ebony and then we've got a little bit of a, about a quarter inch of what we're calling fence post Osage. This Osage orange came from fence posts that were uh, put in the ground in, in uh, Texas on a, on a ranch from one of my clients um, at least in the 1950s and, and my client actually believes that these posts were put in the ground um, pre-1900 and I, I agree with them based on, on what those posts looks like. We, uh, we cut the video here just so that Josh could bring out one of these fence posts of Osage Orange. This is what uh, one of them looks like. And you look at that and think, there's no way you could get a flute out of that. However, with some creative cutting, there is, right inside of here, a flute. And there's actually going to be flutes that come out of this particular piece of uh, Osage. And I have some of this wood cut already. Um, we don't have a lot of it, just just a little bit for enough for maybe four or five flutes. And uh, but when you cut into the wood, you get through this aged wood really, really quickly, and you get into wood that is just beautifully colored. Um, it's got this gorgeous yellow uh, to honey golden brown color to it. And, uh, and that looks like what Osage Orange looks like after it's aged for five or six years in a flute. So I've made flutes out of Osage Orange before. In fact, I made one for my daughter out of Osage Orange when she was uh, three years old. When the woods first cut, it is brilliantly or, um, yellow. I mean, fluorescent yellow. And as it ages, it turns from that fluorescent yellow to this gorgeous honey golden brown. And the entire wood turns that color, not just the outside of it. I know that now from, from working with the fence post. And um, so anyways, we use the fence post here. Um, and as you can see, this, this uh, post is old. This is, uh, this is not like the posts here in Utah. We used, uh, here in Utah, they used a lot of 
cedar, but uh, uh, those posts are uh, even being cedar. They're they're about completely rotted out now, where this is still extremely solid wood. I had to stop the video because I was freezing and I had to go get my coat. Um, additionally, uh, Toots wanted a different post to sit on. <laughs> So this is great, you know, this is just so beautiful. Josh actually thought of that, and uh, it, it really looks amazing. God, she's so beautiful. It's, you know, sitting here with Toots, one of the things that is really fascinating is when I turn and look at her, and I see her in her eyes, it's kind of intimidating. It's like, man, it's like really serious, and she looks fierce. And uh, there definitely is a sense of, you know, stand up, Brent, get your back straight. <laughs> and um, as, uh, as you look at her, it's just incredible. The totem itself is made from the, the Osage Orange uh, fence post, and the top of the totem is left raw, and as well as there's a log of the Osage carved um, for uh, Toots to sit on here on the flute. Um, Toots is on the flute has, is made from the coconut palm, uh, she's got a nose of ebony and some ebony inlay around to uh, kind of highlight her facial structure. Um, and then she has um, citrine eyes in here. Remembrance is made from Maser birch, and Maser birch is, uh, is incredibly uh, figured because of uh, stress and, and challenges that the trees grow through up in the Netherlands area. I chose this wood specifically because it looks to me like the, the beautiful yellow color of grass that has turned to straw. And so uh, this time of year, the mountains um, typically have turned yellow here in Utah. And actually, as I look up at the mountains, there's still a lot of green available uh, to see on the mountains, uh, just because we've had so much water this year. But uh, typically, uh, the, the mountains are really this kind of color. And so, uh, and it's just beautiful. There's, when you see this in the high sunlight, there's lots of figure and three-dimensionality to the flute itself. So we'll go ahead and play Remembrance for you uh, right now and, uh, and let you hear what this, uh, this gorgeous flute sounds like. You ready, Toots? Yeah, she's just turning for you. So again, this is Remembrance. I'm here with Toots and Dax now, and uh, we hope you enjoy the, uh, this video. Uh, we've had a lot of fun making these flutes and, uh, and creating them, and we really appreciate you, our clients. Um, we appreciate your patience. We appreciate uh, um, 
the joy that you make uh, with our flutes, the music that you make, and, uh, and as you let us know about that, it really is wonderful to hear how much joy that uh, you're getting from your instruments. Um, I'm Brent Haynes with Wood Sound Flutes. You can reach me at 801-822-1415 or brent at woodsounds.com. Have a great day.